بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما ما إن بقيت من الهوان على الثرى ملقا ثلاثا في ربا ووهادي إلا لكي تقضي عليك صلاتها زمر الملائك فوق سبع شداد لهفي لرأسك وهو يرفع مشرقا كالبدر فوق الذابل الميادي يتلو الكتاب وما سمعت بواعظ تخذ القنا بدلا عن الأعواد لهفي على الصدر المعظم يشتكي يا من بعد رشق النبل رض جيا يا 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 دي ولهفتا على خزانة علمك سجاد وهو يقاد في الأصفاد باد الظنا يشكو على عار المطاء يا عض القيود ونهشة الأقتاء يا جامد يا وما سمعت بمحنة السجايا يا دي ويصيح وجدا أين عشيرتي يا وسرات قومي أين أهل ودايا يا 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 دي منهم خلات 
ذلك الديار وبعدهم نعب الغراب بفرقة وبعادي لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وجعلناهم أئمة يهدون بأمرنا وأوحينا إليهم فعل الخيرات وأوحينا إليهم فعل الخيرات وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وكانوا لنا عابدين صلوا على محمد وآل محمد The 25th of Muharram marks the martyrdom anniversary of Imam Ali ibn al Hussein Zain al Abidin. This great Imam of the Ahlul Bayt who inherited the miseries and the challenges from his father, Imam al Hussein. And perhaps one could say that Imam Zain al Abidin lived in one of the most difficult times for the Ahlul Bayt. The challenges that the Imam faced were very great. But you see that the Imam, he carried that responsibility, the responsibility of the Imam, that role that position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave certain individuals, the Imam, he took on that task on the day of Ashura after Imam al Hussein was killed. He became the Imam, the official Imam, the official leader, representative of Allah, the official Khalifa. And he also took on the responsibilities to preserve the religion, to preserve the message of Rasulullah and the message of his father, Imam al Hussein. And the position of Imamah is a very difficult task that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives only to the ones who He has chosen and He knows that they will be able to carry on that task. Allah says in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ The ja'al, this is the appointment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we see Allah speaking about the prophets, when He speaks about Prophet Adam, He says, إِنِّي جَعْلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً When He speaks about Prophet Dawood, يَا دَاوُود إِنَّا جَعَلْنَاكَ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً The word ja'al, is always used when the word khilafa is used and when the word imama is used. And this is from the Quran. It's very clear. Anytime you see that the word khilafa, khalifa is used, the representative of Allah, or the imama is used, you see that most of the times it is associated with the word ja'al. And here also in this verse we see, ja'al means appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً We made them, we appointed them as Imams. يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا The guidance comes by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ وَإِقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ وَكَانُوا لَنَا عَابِدِينَ In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out what the qualifications, what the merits of a true, real Imam is. And we see that the first, يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا They guide by the order of Allah. They stand for prayer. They give zakat. They help out the people. 
This is what all of the Imams did. And we see that this is what Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam, this is also something that he was able to do despite the fact that he lived in a very difficult time, a climate that was full of hatred towards the Ahlul Bayt. If we want to truly get to know the Imam, Imam Zain al Abidin, we have to know the era that he was living in, the time that he was living in. You see that the time that was during his imamah, that time was a time full of difficulties for the Ahlul Bayt First of all, Yazid was in power. Yazid had just come to power and he ruled for three years. The first year, he killed Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, year 61 after Hijrah. He killed Imam Al Hussein and he took his women and his children as captive from Karbala to Kufa and then from Kufa to Sham. And he had the head of Imam Al Hussein on a spear all over the Muslim world. This is one thing that he did. The second thing, Yazid, the second year that he ruled, he sacked the city of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He attacked Medina. He sent an army from Sham that <coughs> he ordered the army to attack the city of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And this is exactly what they did. The army was sent under the command of a man by the name of Muslim ibn Uqba. This man, his nickname, they began to call him Al-Musraf ibn Uqba. Because he kept killing and killing, he did israf in the blood, in bloodshed. He did israf in how much he kills people. So they called him Musraf. He entered in the masjid of Rasulullah with his own army. They say that with the horses, of the army and the cattle of the army, they entered next to the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. In that event, it's called Waqa'at al harrah Until today, if you go to the Baqi' if you go to Medina, you see that there's a certain portion in the graveyard in the Baqi' cemetery where the, those are the shuhada of that incident, Waqa'at al harrah where over 700 sahaba of Rasulullah were killed by this man Yazid and the army of Yazid. Over 700 were killed. It is said that after that event, a year later, over 1,000 babies were born, but they could not guarantee whose father they, who's their father. Because he made the city of Rasulullah halal upon his army. And one thing that he did was that he made some of the Sahaba and some of the Tabi'een he made them sign that they are the slaves of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. This is what he was doing. This is all recorded in the Muslim history. This is not something that the followers of the Ahlul Bayt just have. This is the second year he ruled. The third year he ruled, Abdullah ibn Zubayr. Abdullah, the son of Zubayr, he was in, the, in Mecca and he declared himself as the Khalifa after Imam Hussein was gone. By the way, this man, he was a man who had a bad ending. Even though he fought Yazid, but this man, he refused to help Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He wanted Imam al Hussein to leave so that he is the only one remaining. And people, they come and they look towards him. But that was a very evil thing that he did. And he was killed in Masjid al Haram by the army of Yazid. By the army of Yazid. And in that event, when he was killed, Yazid's army, they attack the Kaaba, the Kaaba, the holiest masjid, the holiest house, the place of worship, the most sanctified place. He attacked it with a catapult, Manjaniq. And the Kaaba was destroyed in that event and it was burnt in that event. So you see that if Yazid was willing to kill Imam al Hussein, he was willing to desecrate the city of Rasulullah. He was willing to attack Masjid al-Haram. Of course, killing Imam, al Imam Zain al-Abideen would have been something very easy for him. Because Imam Zain al-Abideen was not from the Sahaba of Rasulullah. He was from the Tabi'een. And there were some who were Sahaba of the Prophet that he didn't respect. There were some who were the children of the Prophet who he did not respect like Imam al Hussein. So Imam Zain al-Abideen, killing him would have been something very easy. This was one of the challenges that the Ummah as a whole was facing at the time. The second challenge that the Muslim nation as a whole was facing at that time 
is the challenge of ignorance. Because Bani Umayyah, they killed hundreds of the Sahaba of the Prophet. They killed all of the ulama, anyone who stands in front of them, anyone who disagrees with Yazid, that person was right away killed. So where is going to, is there going to be an alim, a scholar that is remaining? Either that alim is taking money from Bani Umayyah, and of course that alim is not going to come and tell them, object to what they're doing. So we see that that time, even though it was just 50, 60 years after the death of Rasulullah, people were, the society at that time was full of ignorance. And even during the time of Yazid and the time after Yazid, the Khulafa after Yazid, they were expanding the Muslim Ummah. During the time of Imam Zain al Abidin, the Muslim army reached Spain, Al Andalus. They reached Spain. Today, if you go to Spain, Will you see any signs of Islam? Will you see any signs of Iman? No. Because Bani Umayyah, their whole tactic, their whole message, their whole aim and objective was just to take power. Today some people, they come and they say, don't attack Bani Umayyah. Don't say anything bad about Bani Umayyah. Even though they killed Imam al Hussein, even though they desecrated the grave of the Prophet, even though they attacked the Kaaba, don't talk bad about them. Why? Because they expanded the Muslim empire. Is this really what we want? Do we just want to expand in quantity, but there's no quality? No. And this is one thing that we learned from Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and that is to reform ourselves before we try to reform other people. You see, some people always they're looking at the faults of others. You did the wrong, you're not doing this right, you're not doing that right. But then someone just needs to come and bring them a mirror so that they could look at themselves. Look at the mistakes that they have. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and the Ahlul Bayt, their mission, Imam al Hussein, his whole war, his whole rebellion, what he did against Yazid was for the sake of reforming the Ummah. And he was killed for that cause. So we see Bani Umayyah, even though they expanded the Muslim land, you see that the quality of Islam was very far. Islam was very far from the way. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi meant for it to be. So these were the challenges that Imam Zain al-Abidin was facing. One is the bloodshed and the tyranny. And even after Yazid came the, the Bani Umayyah from the children of Marwan. They took the power and Al-Hajjaj, he was one of the most ruthless, most wicked, evil men who killed hundreds of thousands of people in the name of Islam, in the name of the Qur'an. This was during the time of Imam Zain al-Abidin So that was one of the challenges. The second challenge is the challenge of ignorance. How is the Imam going to deal with these challenges? What is he going to do to change the course of the Ummah and fix the problem? We see that the Imam, the first, things that, they, the first thing that and all of the Imams did was to educate the people. Because when you are educated, you are empowered. When you are empowered, you're going to be able to stand against the tyrant of your time. And you see that every dictator, every tyrant, every oppressive person, what they want is for people to be uneducated. They want people to be ignorant. Because when someone is educated, they're going to ask questions. They're going to ask why. But there are some people that come and they say, no, 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 don't ask. All you have to do is just believe, just follow, just do. But that's not what the Ahlul Bayt taught us. The Ahlul Bayt, the Quran, Rasulullah, Amir al muminin they empowered the people and the Muslims by educating them, by giving them the power of knowledge. Because once you're educated, you're going to be able to think freely. You're going to be able to make decisions on your own. You don't always need to follow what someone else is telling you to do. And in Islam, when it comes to our aqidah, when it comes to our faith, we don't have taqlid. Taqlid, what we do is only when it comes to the furu' ad deen And that is learning how to pray, how to fast, all of these other things. We learn from experts. But when it comes to our belief system, we cannot do taqlid in that. I cannot worship Allah because my father is worshiping Allah. I cannot believe in the afterlife because my mother and my ancestors and my whole family are, are doing that. Then I also come and do that. 
I have to be educated. I have to be empowered. We see that this is what the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt did. And we see the Imams, they always sought to empower people. Amir al Mu'mineen, in the middle of the war, in the middle of a battle, someone comes and asks Amir al Mu'mineen a question about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about Tawheed. Amir al Mu'mineen, in the middle of the battle, he begins to explain to this man about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some other person, he comes and he says, is this the time? We're in the middle of a war. We're in the middle of a battle. You're coming and you're asking a question. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, this is the whole reason we are fighting. Isn't it that we learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Isn't it so that we are educated? So we see that this is what the Imams did. And the Imam Zayn al-Abideen, he established and he set the footprints and the blueprint for the university of Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq alayhum salam. You see that most and some of the most renowned students of Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq, mostly Imam al-Baqir, they were also the students of Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam. Like for example, one of them is Abu Hamza al-Thumali. Abu Hamza al-Thumali, he lived also during the time of Imam al-Baqir. There were some of the known narrators of hadith, known muhaddithin, they were the students of Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam. But of course, Imam Zain al-Abidin, he had his own way of teaching them because he didn't have the freedom. But you see that <coughs> until today, he, Imam Zain al-Abidin, is accredited for being a teacher for some of the main muhaddithin, narrators of hadith from the Shia school of thought and from the Sunni school of thought. Today, Imam Zain al-Abidin is a very respected figure even in the Sunni school of thought. Because he is the son of Imam al-Husayn. And all of the Imams, of course, they are very respected in the Sunni school of thought. But Imam Zain al-Abideen, he had a very important role. And he was a teacher to some of, the, some of the most important scholars that they accept. And Imam Zain al-Abideen, alayhi salam, through his knowledge, through his wisdom, he was able to educate people. One day they came and they told him, that one of the scholars, and this scholar, he is a scholar that is very respected, very accepted in the Sunni school of thought today, and especially amongst the Sufis. They told him that this man, Al-Hasan Al-Basri, his name is Al-Hasan Al-Basri, he says, لَيْسَ الْعَجَبْ مِمَّنْ هَلَكْ كَيْفَ هَلَكْ وَأَمَّا الْعَجَبْ مِمَّنْ نَجَى كَيْفَ نَجَى Meaning that, the mercy of Allah is very small. He says, I'm not, I'm not surprised if someone goes to hell, but I'm surprised when someone goes to heaven. So the Imam, he replied, He says, no. In fact, it's the other way around. I'm not surprised when someone goes to heaven because Allah's mercy is so vast. Allah has made it very easy for everyone to go to paradise. But I'm surprised when someone fails the test and they, go to, they end up going to the hellfire. This is how, this is one of the ways that the Imam taught people. So th there was a small, there was a short period where he was able to speak. But most of the time, he had to do it through other tactics. Some of his other tactics was through purchasing slaves. I mentioned that during that time, during the time of Bani Umayyah, the Muslim empire was growing and they would bring in a lot of slaves. Of course, slavery is not something that was started by Islam. Slavery was something that was inherited by Islam and Islam dealt with it in a way to eradicate it. You see, most of our rulings, many of our teachings, for example, if you did not fast in the month of Ramadan, one of the first kafara that you have to do is free a slave. For example, if you did a mistake in something else, you have to free a slave. The religion of Islam, it promoted and it encouraged people to remove slavery. But of course, Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam, he was able to do that. He was able to educate people and eradicate slavery through purchasing slaves. Now someone would say, how did he purchase slave and he is eradicating slavery? Because he is empowering them. What he did was he would buy, he would purchase slaves, and then he would teach them 
He would educate them. They would learn the language. They would learn the religion. They would be empowered. Then one year later, he would free them in the way of Allah. And this is how Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam managed to educate society by purchasing slaves. He educates them. He empowers them. <coughs> and then he lets them go in the way of Allah after one year. And some of those slaves, they became the ulama of their time. They became scholars that we, today we look, up, we look on their hadith and we look up to them. But they were slaves at one point in their lives. And then they were freed. One of the narrators during the time of Imam Zain al-Abideen, he says one, one year there was a drought. So we all came out to do salat al-istisqa. We all came out to perform the prayer and in this salah, you separate the mother from her child. You separate even the animals. The, the, the animals, you separate the mother from the child. And this is something so that everyone begins crying, so that everyone begins begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah for the mercy. So one of these narrators, he says, we were crying, we were begging, we were asking Allah to send down the rain. He says, there was nothing. He said, suddenly I saw a man, he came in front of me. I heard him saying, oh Allah, you know that I have never disobeyed you, not once in my life. Send down the rain upon us. He says, suddenly I saw a cloud came and it, it, it started raining. He said, I looked at that man. I saw that this is a normal person. He looked very poor. He looked like a normal person. He said, I wanted to see who this man is. No one was with him. He said, I followed him. I saw that he went back to the house of Imam Zain al-Abideen. He said, I went in the house of Imam Zain al-Abideen. I realized that he was one of the servants, one of the slaves in the house of Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam. He says, I went to the Imam and I told him, I have a favor. I need, I need to ask you for a favor. The Imam told him, what do you want? He says, I want one of your slaves. The Imam told him, you could have anyone that you want. So he says, can you bring out the slaves? He said, they all came out except that one man, he didn't come out. I looked at the faces, I said, no, I want another one. So he found out, the Imam realized who he was talking about, he called that man. He came and then he said, yes, I want him. I want him. The Imam said, you could have him. That slave he told the Imam, allow me just one more night in your house. I want to spend one more night. I want to spend it with the Imam of my time. This man, he says, I went home. The next day I came and they told me that that man has died. He had asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take his soul so that he, to take his soul so that he does not leave the house of Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam. So the narrator, he says, I began to cry and I became very sad because I wanted to free him. I wanted to take him so that I could serve him, so that I could honor him. But he did not want to leave the house of Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam. So this is one thing that the Imam did. Another thing, another tactic of Imam Zain al-Abideen is that he would empower people but he doesn't have the mambar. He can't go and speak in the masjid of the Prophet. So he empowers people through the dua, through the munajat. And you see that most of our duas, the legacy of the Ahlul Bayt, most of the duas that we have, they are from Imam Zain al Abidin. Dua Abu Hamza, Dua Makaram al Akhlaq, the duas in Sahifa al Sajjadiyah, this book that is filled with dua. Dua for any time. A lot of people, they come and they ask me, Sayyid, I have depression, I'm going through problem, my children, my parents, all of these du'as, there's a specific du'a for every single one of these problems that we face on a daily basis. They're all in du'a, Sahifa Sajjadiyah. All I have to do is go and open it. This is a way that the Imam teaches people. He teaches you what to say, how to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even when it comes to du'a, we learn from the Imams how to call upon Allah, how to do dua, how to perform a dua so that it is going to be answered. 
And then we see that the du'as of the imams, they teach people about aqa'id. They teach people about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They teach people akhlaq. They teach people so many things through the du'a. Through the du'a, you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You learn about your relationship with the Prophet. He teaches you many things through the du'a. This is one thing. Another feature of the du'a is that the Imam alayhi salam, through the du'a, he taught people how to worship. In, in that, that society, society at that, that time, time Bani that Umayyah, they tried to make specifically the city of Rasulullah be a city that instead of having ulama graduate from the city of Rasulullah, they would have dancers and singers in the city of Rasulullah. The Khalifa is sitting, Marwan and his children, they're sitting in the city of the Prophet and they would bring these dancers and these poets in the city of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So desecrating the city and attacking the city was not enough for them. Now they come and they bring these vices to the city of the Prophet. And this was t changing the trajectory, the, tra the way of the city the people, it was influencing the people. But then the Imam, he comes in the middle of that atmosphere, he starts crying and he starts praying and he starts doing dua. What does that do? That changes the whole way of the city. It changes the climate, it changes the environment of the city. It makes people, everyone, when they see the Imam, they start praying, they start doing dua, and they learn how to perform the dua, how to pray, how to supplicate. And this was <coughs> something that the Imam was known for, Zainul Abideen. And this was a title that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi gave him. In a hadith, sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. In a hadith, Rasulullah, he tells the Muslims, he tells them that on the day of judgment, a caller will call out, Aina Zainul Abideen. Where is Zainul Abideen? He says, وَإِذَا, وإذا بِوَلَدِي Ali ibn al Hussein." He says, the caller will call out, where is Zainul Abideen? And then he says, my son, Ali, the son of Hussein, he will pass the lines and he will come and he is Zainul Abideen. One of the narrators by the name of Tawus al-Yamani, this man, he says, one day I was in Mecca and it was in the middle of the night, at night time. At that time, at night, everyone goes and they're resting. There's no electricity. There's not a lot of light. And most of the people, they're resting at night time. He says, at night, I heard someone doing tawaf around the Kaaba and doing dua. He says, I heard a very beautiful dua. Ilahi. غارت نجوم سماواتك وهجعت عيون أنامك وغلقت الملوك أبوابها وبابك مفتوح للسائلين فأسألك أن ترحمني وتريني وجه جدي رسول الله في عرصات القيامة He says, Oh Allah, everyone has closed their doors. All of the kings have closed their doors. But you, O oh my Lord, your doors are open. So I ask you to have mercy upon me and show me the face of my grandfather, Rasulullah, on the, in the darkness of the day of Qiyamah. This man, Tawus al-Yamani, he says, I was surprised. Who's, who talks like this? He said, I went, I saw it is Ali ibn al Hussein, Zain al Abideen. I told him, my master, you are Ali ibn al Hussein, your grandfather is Rasulullah, your grandfather is Amir al Mu'mineen. You are talking like this? He replied, Ya hadha da'an ka hadith abi wa jaddi, fa inna Allah khalaq al jannata liman ata'ah, wa law kana abdan habashiya, wa khalaq al nara liman asah, wa law kana sayyidan qurashiya. He tells me, don't. Tell me who my father is, who my mother is. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. Allah does not judge us based upon our family. He judges us based upon our taqwa, based upon our actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens. For whoever obeys him, even if that is a slave 
from Ethiopia and he created the hellfire for whoever disobeys him, even if that is a Sayyid from Quraysh. This is what the Imam teaches us. Through the dua, through the supplication, he teaches people how to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day, one of the servants in his house, she was asked to describe Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam. So she says, Ufassil am uqassir fil kalam. Should I prolong or should I be short and precise in my words? They told her, No, be short. She says, Ma wadatu lahu ta'aman fi nahar, wala farashtu lahu farashan fi layl. She says, Never have I brought food in front of him during the day and never did I place his mattress at night time. What does that mean? That means that the Imam is fasting every day and he is praying all of his nights. This is why he was named as sajjad Sajjad means the one who is constantly performing sujood. Zain al-Abideen. One of the names of Imam Zain al-Abideen is the thafanat. Thafanat, they are the knees, the rough knees of a camel. You know the camel in the desert? The camel places its knees on the sand, on the hot sand of the desert. They become very rough. They become very hard and rough. The forehead of Imam Zain al Abidin had become as rough as the knees of a camel. And this is why he is called the Thafanat. This was Imam Zain al Abidin. Another thing that the Imam was known for was his akhlaq, his beautiful akhlaq. And this is something that all of the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt were known for. When they are oppressed, they come and they show good merits, good qualities. In one hadith, he says, if the murderer of my father, if the one who killed my father entrusted me with the sword that he killed my father with, I would give it back to him. Where do you see someone like this? Where he says that if he gave me a, his sword as an amana, as a trust, I would give it back to him. And of course, this is no surprise for us. His grandfather Rasulullah was a sadiq al-ameen, the trustworthy, that even the kuffar of Quraysh, they trusted Rasulullah with their money. Even though they don't believe in him, they, they would come and they would place their money next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. This, these were the Ahlul Bayt Their akhlaq, even with their enemies. You know, one of the men who harassed and abused and oppressed the Ahlul Bayt so much was Marwan ibn al-Hakam. This man Marwan, he became a Khalifa during the time of Imam Zain al-Abidin salam. Marwan, he and his father, they were kicked out of Medina by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. because his father was making fun of the Prophet. The Prophet kicked out his father, Al-Hakam, out of the city of Rasulullah. But then later on, the other Khulafa, they came and they brought them back and they ended up becoming, he ended up becoming a Khalifa during the time of Imam Zain al abidin This man, Marwan, he tried to kill Imam Al-Hussein because when Imam Al-Hussein was in Medina, the governor of Medina, he called him, he tells him, give bay'ah. Imam, Imam al-Hussein told the governor, let me go, I will, I will talk about it tomorrow. Marwan, he tells the governor, don't let him go. If he goes, you're not going to see him anymore. Meaning, kill him now. This man, Marwan, after the event of Karbala, there was a rebellion in Medina. Before he became Khalifa, there was a rebellion in Medina. The people of Medina, they rebelled against Bani Umayyah. Marwan, he became very scared. Where is he going to take his family? Where is he going to take his children? He saw that he has nowhere to take his family other than the house of Imam Zain al Abidin. Who, Bani Umayyah, they had just killed half of Bani Hashim, the children of the brothers and the siblings of Imam Zain al Abidin. They were all killed by Bani Umayyah. He comes and he brings his women and his children and he tells Imam Ali ibn Hussein, I have nowhere to put my children and my family. Can they stay with you? Imam Zain al Abidin, he accepted them and he gave them refuge. And Marwan, he left, he escaped for a while. Then he came back and 
the rebellion was over and he became the Khalifa. But this shows the beauty of Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam. Another thing that Imam Zain al-Abideen was known for, that was his teaching the people about Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Teaching people about his grandfather, Amir al Mu'mineen. Telling people who he is. Because there were many Muslims. Islam in quantity was expanding. But in quality, no one knew who the Ahlul Bayt were. In Sham, the city, the, the city of Sham, some people they didn't know. They thought Amir al Mu'mineen and Imam al Hussein they were rebels. Some people, they thought that Imam al Hussein was a rebel. He was fighting the legitimate leader. This is why some of them, they began to curse Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. They say that when they brought the head of Imam al Hussein, and of course, we are in the days of Muharram and Safar. On days like this, the family of Imam al Hussein, they are taken captive to go all the way to Sham. They had the head of Imam al Hussein and the family of Imam al Hussein. They say that they brought the head of Imam al-Hussein and the family, they arrived to Sham. A old man, he, became, he came and he started cursing at Imam Zain al-Abideen and the women and the children that were with him. He says, Alhamdulillah alladhi qatalakum wa arah al-bilada minkum. He says, all praise is due to Allah that he humiliated you and he killed you and he honored the Amir Yazid ibn Muawiyah. Imam Zain al-Abideen, he tells this old man, Ya Shaykh, Hal qara'at al-Qur'an? Oh Shaykh, have you recited the Qur'an? The man, he thinks that they are war prisoners that are brought from outside. He thought that they were rebels. He doesn't know that they are the children of Rasulullah. Then he says, yes, I've read the Qur'an. What do you have with the Qur'an? He tells him, have you read the verse, وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى And give the qurba their rights. He said, yes, I have read that verse. Then the imam says, have you read the verse, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا غَنِمْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَهُ وَلِلْرَسُولِ وَلِذِ الْقُرْبَى He tells him, yes, I've heard that verse. He tells him, have you read the verse, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا he says, yes, I've heard that verse. He tells him, have you read the verse? قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى He says, yes, I've heard that verse. The Imam tells him, نَحْنُ الْقُرْبَى يَا شَيْخِ We are the Qurba, we are the family of the Prophet. The man, he says, by Allah, you are the family of the Prophet? The Imam tells him, yes, by Allah, we are the family of the Prophet. Then that old man began to curse at Yazid and Bani Umayyah, Yazid he heard and he ordered for that man to be killed at that moment. They bring Imam Zain al Abidin and the women and the children in the palace of Yazid. Yazid he brought them and he, tried, he held a huge majlis so that he shows the people how he has captured the family of Imam al Hussein who were rebels, they were rebelling against the haq rebelling against the khilafah and then Yazid he asks one of the speakers to stand on the member to go on the member and attack Imam al Hussein Amir al Mu'mineen in front of Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam the Shaykh the speaker he goes he sits on the member and he begins to curse the Ahlul Bayt, the Ahlul Bayt that are purified in the Quran. He begins to curse them. And then Imam Zain al Abidin, who was just 23 years at that time, he was just 23 years, he calls out, Ayyuha al Khatib, laqad ishtarayta mardat al Makhluq, bisakhat al Khaliq, fatabawa maqadaka min al Nar. O oh speaker, you have traded. Hell for paradise because of the words that you are saying. And then Imam Zain al Abidin, who was very weak, he was in chains. He tells Yazid, Ya Yazid, then li an as'ada hadhi al a'wad wa atakallama bi kalamin lillahi fihi rida wa liha ula il julasa fihi ajrun wa thawab. Oh Yazid, let me stand on these pieces of wood. He doesn't call it a mumbar. 
He says this, these pieces of wood because it didn't have the barakah of a manbar. A piece of wood that is constantly cursing the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. And say something that will satisfy Allah and will bring reward to the ones who are listening. Yazid, he refused. There were people around him, they said, Yazid, what, what is this 23 year old, what is this young man going to say? Then Yazid accepted. Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam, he went and he began to tell them who he was. All, he began to tell them who his grandfather is, who Amir al Mu'mineen is, who Imam al Hussein is, who Fatima al Zahra is, and that changed the whole environment. It made a rebellion be in the majlis of Yazid, in the courtyard of Yazid. Imam Zain al Abidin. He began his speech by telling people, أَيُّهَا nas, أُعْطِيْنَا سِتًّا وَفَضِّلْنَا بِسَبْعٍ أُعْطِيْنَا الْعِلْمَ وَالْحِلْمَ وَالسَّمَاحَةَ وَالْفَصَاحَةَ وَالشَّجَاعَةَ وَالْمَحَبَّةَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَفَضِّلْنَا بِأَنَّ مِنَّا النَّبِيِّ الْمُخْتَارِ وَمِنَّا الصِّدِّيقِ وَمِنَّا الطَّيَّارِ وَمِنَّا أَسَدُ اللَّهِ وَأَسَدُ رَسُولِهِ ومنا سيدة النساء ومنا صبط هذه الأمة ومنا مهديها. and then he began to tell them who he was. أيها الناس من عرفني فقد عرفني ومن لم يعرفني أن بأته بحسبي ونسبي أنا ابن مكة ومنا أنا ابن زمزم والصفا أنا ابن من حمل الركن بأطراف الردا. أنا ابن خير من اتزر وارتدى أنا ابن خير من انتعل واحتفى أنا ابن خير من طاف وسعى أنا ابن خير من حج ولبى أنا ابن من أسري به من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى أنا ابن من بلغ به جبرائيل سدرة المنتهى أنا ابن من دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى أنا ابن من صلى بملائكة السماء مثنا مثنا أنا ابن من أوحى إليه الجليل ما أوحى أنا ابن محمد المصطفى أنا ابن علي المرتضى أنا ابن من ضرب خراطيم الخلق حتى قالوا لا إله إلا الله أنا ابن من ضرب بين يدي رسول الله بسيفين وطعنا برمحين وهاجر الهجرتين وبايع البيعتين وقاتل ببدر وحنين ولم يكفر بالله طرفة عين أنا ابن صالح المؤمنين ووارث النبيين وقامع الملحدين ويعسوب المسلمين ونور المجاهدين وتاج البكائين وزين العابدين وأصبر الصابرين وأفضل القائمين من آل ياسين رسول رب العالمين أنا ابن المؤيد بجبرائيل المنصور بميكائيل أنا ابن المحامي عن حرم المسلمين وقاتل الناكثين والقاسطين والمارقين والمجاهد أعدائه الناصبين وأفخر من مشى من قريش أجمعين وأول من أجاب واستجاب لله ولرسوله من المؤمنين وأول السابقين وقاصم المعتدين ومبيد المشركين وسهم من مرام الله على المنافقين ولسان حكمة العابدين وعيبة, حكمة وعيبة علم الله سمح سخي بهي بهلول زكي أبطحي رضي مقدام همام صابر صوام مهذب قوام قاطع الأصلاب ومفرق الأحزاب أربطهم عنانا وأفضلهم جنات وأمضاهم عزيمة وأشدهم شكيمة أسد باسل يطحنهم في الحروب إذا ازدلفت الأسن واقتربت الأعن طحن الرحى ويذروهم فيها ذر والريح الهشيم ليث الحجاز وكبش العراق 
مكي مدني حنفي عقبي بدري أحدي شجري مهاجري من العرب سيدها ومن الوغى ليثها وارث المشعرين وأبو الصبطين الحسن والحسين ذاك جدي أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب أنا ابن عديمات العيوب أنا ابن نقيات الجيوب أنا ابن خديجة الكبرى أنا ابن فاطمة الزهراء أنا ابن سيدة النساء He explained he explained to the people who his grandfather was. Then he explained the merits of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And then he tells them that he is the son of Fatima al-Zahra and Khadija al-Kubra. Now they don't know whether he's the son of Imam al Hussein or the son of Imam al Hassan. Then he tells them, Ayyuhannas, Ana ibn al Madhbuh bi Karbala. I am the son of the one who was slaughtered in Karbala. Ana ibn man ra'suhu ala sinan yuhda. I am the son of the one whose head was passed on in the spear. And ibn man haramahu min Karbala ila sham tusba. I am the son of the one whose family was taken from Shah from Karbala to Sham. I am the son of the one who the birds in the sky and the jinn on earth cried for him. Yazid realized that people were turning against him. So he decided to stop the Imam. He ordered the Mu'addin to perform the Adhan. That was the only way he can stop the Adhan. The Mu'addin said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Imam Zain al-Abideen, he says, Kabbarta kabiran la yuqas. لا شيء أكبر من الله. There is nothing greater than Allah. Then the Mu'addin says, أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله. Imam Zain al-Abideen, he says, شهد بها لحمي وبشري وعظمي وعظمي وجلدي. My body, my my bones, my my skin all bear witness that there is no god other than Allah. Then the Mu'addin said. أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله. إمام زين العابدين. He turned to Yazid and he tells him, يا يزيد هذا محمد جدي أم جدك؟ فإن قلت أنه جدك فقد كذبت وكفرت. وإن قلت أنه جدي فلما قتلت ذريته وسبيت نساء. Oh Yazid, Muhammad, he is your grandfather or my grandfather. If you claim that he is your grandfather, then you are a liar. And if you say that he is my grandfather, then why did you kill his family and his children? The majlis finished, but Imam Zain al Abidin, throughout his whole life, over the 30 years that he lived, he kept on reminding people of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He cries every time, ما قدم له طعام ولا شراب إلا وقد اختلط بدموعه على أبي عبد الله. Every time they bring food, every time they bring water for them, it was mixed with his tears for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He goes, they come and they tell him, O oh, son of Rasulullah, why are you crying so much? The Imam, he says, Ya'qub, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from him one son, Yusuf, and Ya'qub had 11 other sons. And he knew that Yusuf was alive. Allah describes that Ya'qub cried until he went blind. فَبْيَضَّتْ عَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ وَهْوَ كَظِيمٍ he says, what do you expect me to do when I saw my father and 17 members of my family butchered one after the other in front of me? He goes and he stands in front of the butcher. He sees the butcher is about to slaughter a sheep. The imam tells him, oh butcher, have you given water to this sheep before you slaughter it? The butcher says, yes, yep, oh son of Rasulullah, this is the sunnah of Rasulullah, of course. 
we give water to the sheep so that it is not butchered thirsty. Then the Imam, he t faces Karbala, he says, Assalamu alayka ya abata, ya aba abdillah. الكبش يسقى ماء من ضمأ قبل أن يذبح وأما أنت فذبحوك عطشانا أبو حمزة الثمالي أبو حمزة he comes to the imam and he tells the imam O son of رسول الله القتل لكم عادة وكرامتكم من الله الشهادة أو سنة رسول الله. Many people have been killed in your family. حمزة جعفر أمير المؤمنين. They were all شهداء. You are used to this. The Imam replied, نعم يا أبا حمزة القتل لنا عادة وكرامتنا من الله الشهادة ولكن يا أبا حمزة هل رض الصدور عادة هل سبي النساء عادة هل حرق الخيام عادة كلما نظرت إلى عماتي وأخواتي تذكرت فرارهن من خيمة إلى خيمة قلبي يا أبو حمزة تراه تفتت وذاب مثل المصيبة اللي دهاتني ما حد انصاب قلبي يا أبو حمزة تراه تفتت وذاب مثل المصيبة اللي دهاتني ما حد انصاب ذيك الأقمار اللي بمنازلنا يزهرون والليل كله من العبادة ما يفترون سبعة وعشرة فارقتهم كلهم غصون فرئيد ساعة والسدام حر التراب يا أبا حمزة لو شفت جسم اللي على المسنات مطروح وذاك الشباب اللي بصباح العرس مذبوح لا شفت الأكبار ما لمتني بكثرة النوح ما خلت لنا كرب لا شيخ ولا شام بعيني بعيني نظرت حسين بيد الطفل منحور ومر باب تعاينا ودمو ما يدفور ومصيبة اللي هيجت حزني علي عاينت صدر حسين تحت الأعوجية لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون Let us raise our hands in dua by the honor and position of Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam, this great Imam who was oppressed his whole life, he witnessed the great calamities upon Imam al Hussein. We cry for Imam al Hussein, but we did not see anything. The Imam, he himself saw all of this. So let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the position and the glory and the honor of Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam. Nas'aluka Allahumma wa nad'uuk bismika al-Azim al-A'zam al-A'az al-Ajal al-Akram ya Allah. Ya Allah, ya Rahman, ya Rahim, ya Muqallib al-Qulub, thabbit Qulubana ala deenik. Allahumma aghfir lil-Mu'mineen wal-Mu'minaat. الأحياء منهم والأموات 
تابع الله بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين